boys and girls, it's Colin back again. Today we're going to go to Macrafelt. It's a big town right in the middle of Northern Ireland, not too far away from Loch Ney. Before we get there, we're going to sing the words, the song Stop, but let me tell you. Sing along, Stop, but let me tell you. Okay, let's go and have a look at Macrafelt to see what's happening. Today we are in the county of London Derry. The largest town in South Derry is Macrafelt. It's a, it's a political, uh, the economics uh, hub of South Derry and a town called Macrafelt. Quite a big town, very busy town. Uh, we are in a place called the Diamond here in the centre. And if you were to go that way, you would pass through Tobermore, Desert Martin, Draper's Town. If you go that way at the roundabout, you come to Moneymore, Cookstown, and Gannon. And if you go that way, you come to Castle Dawson and the big roundabout. And if you're going to London Derry or Belfast, Castle Dawson is at the bottom of Macrafelt. And then this way here will take you to other directions. You can eventually come to um, Port Clannone or a way out that way or Randallstown so it's quite central very very busy that quite often no matter what time of the day at the traffic's almost at a standstill even though there's a flyover you see lots of shops it's one of those towns you come to and it's got everything going for it if you want something electoral there's sports shops electrical shop lots of cafes hairdressers uh, not not for me but for anybody else's fashion shops um, also, whatever, no matter what local shops you want to, and of course on the outside, you've got the bigger supermarkets, etc. But whenever I, whenever I think about the diamond here, here in Macrafelt, whenever I think about diamond, I think about jewellery. And I, I think about, I'm not really in, the only piece of jewellery I own is my wedding ring. Um, but some people are really into jewellery, understand the value of it. But again, when I think about the value and think about jewellery and think about value, Whenever Jesus was there, there was a woman called Mary, and she had precious ointment, the price of lots of diamonds. It was equivalent to a full year's salary. And she got the ointment, and she came, and she poured it on the feet of Jesus, and she would use, use her hair to dry the feet of Jesus. In other words, she gave what she could. She gave for everything, and that's how much she appreciated Jesus. And the disciples would come along and say, scold her and tell her off. said, why are you wasting all of that precious ointment? But Jesus turned back and said, what have you given me? She's given me everything and you have given me nothing. And quite often we can go through life being selfish and not thinking about other people, especially not thinking about God and giving to God. God loves it when we give. In the Bible, it teaches about giving God 10% of our income, tithing it to church or to good cause or for God's work. But even our time and our energy, giving that back to God, because God is the one who gives us your body. He's the one that makes everything work. And when everything's going perfectly, we can just take God for granted. But suddenly when things st start to go wrong, we get sick or unhealthy or unwell, then we realize we need to pray and ask God for help. But don't wait till something goes wrong with your life. Always pray and ask God to help you whenever you can. Whenever you think about the diamond, there was a, a king called Solomon in the Bible, and he was the wealthiest king ever. He was so wise, uh, the wisdom of Solomon. Uh, another queen of Sheba from a different country, she came to visit Solomon one day. And whenever she saw his wealth and his jewelry and everything he owned and the way his uh, staff, his workers, treated and respected him, she was amazed and she was taken back. She said, the half was never told. What you told me about this king? 
I never knew the half of it. And that's like a relationship with God. In primary school, we learn things about God. We learn things about the Bible. We learn things about Jesus. But whenever you become a Christian and you start to read the Bible for yourself, you will realize what you learned before is so little in comparison to what there is actually to learn about God. And whenever we see some of the signs, you've got Queen Street, and even the Bible talks about lots of queens. There was good kings and bad kings, good queens and bad queens. One of them, good queens, was called Queen Esther. She was a little orphan girl, and humanly speaking, as she was growing up, her father and mother both died, whatever happened. So therefore, she was left without a mum and without a dad. She became an orphan just like that. And she was raised by her elder cousin called Mordecai. And one day, the, the king, he no longer had his wife, and he wanted a new queen. And Esther, she entered a competition to be the queen, the next queen, the king's wife. And she won that competition. Esther was a child of God. And because Esther was a Christian, a believer in God, she was able to save the entire country uh, by, by praying and taking a stand and speaking up for what was true. And that's why God loves it when children give their heart and lives to Jesus. So whenever you're in school or big school or get a job or go to university, he loves his people to be there, to stand up for what's right, to stand up for what's true. Some people do wrong things or make bad decisions. The Christian can be there to say, no, that's not right. I think we should do that because that's a teaching of what the Bible teaches. There was another queen in the Bible. This queen was called Jezebel. She was a bad queen. She was a wicked queen. The Bible says that Jezebel and Ahab, her husband, they done more to make God angry or to provoke God to anger more than any other person who ever lived. They told everyone to stop worshiping God and they built a big false god called Baal and they told everyone, you're not allowed to worship God in heaven. You can't sing to God in heaven pray to God in heaven, you must worship this false god called Baal. And that's why God had one person called Elijah. And Elijah came and he challenged the king. And the king laughed at Elijah because Elijah said, there's one true and living God. And he said, we must only worship that God, which is a true God. And Elijah said, because you don't believe me, I'm going to ask God to turn off the rain. And it never rained for three and a half years. See, sometimes we forget. That's why we sing the song, our God is a great big God. God God is the one who made this universe. He made the world. He causes it to rain, to stop raining, to snow, to stop so snowing, the sun to come out to shine, the moon to shine, the stars, all these things, even from the very human body that we live in, he makes it alive. So sometimes in life, we can go through life and, and be selfish and just think about me. But God says, it's not about you. Just like Elijah was teaching the king, we're not to worship idols or any other gods. God's given us 10 commandments. And the first one is, we're only to worship the one true and living God, and we're not to worship idols. So God loves it when his children stand up for him. So you've got Queen going the, the Queen, and then you've got one called the Broad Street, a big wide street where people can walk down. And then we learn in the Bible too about the broad way and the narrow way. The broad way is like going through life, not caring about God and having everything you want. And when your life's over, you die without God. But the narrow way goes a different direction and that follows the way of God. And the Bible says, few there are who find it. In other words, most people don't follow God. Most people won't become Christians. Most people will not go to heaven because most people will want to follow the way of the world, the way of everybody else. But there's a narrow way that leads on to truth and righteousness, leads to heaven. And that narrow way is the way to God. And the only way to go on that street is by Jesus because he said, I am the way to God. I am the way, the truth and the life. And that life is found in the Lord Jesus. He gives us life, abundant life, everlasting life, eternal life. And that's why the Bible is so important to learn about God and to follow the narrow way that leads to God. So boys and girls, when you're young, think about these things and give your heart and your life to Jesus Christ and be like Elijah and stand up because God loves children who follow him, who trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust in him and obey him and to follow him. And it's a wonderful life following Jesus. So that was Mark Raffel, part of her towns and cities and villages over Northern Ireland together with their occupations and also different assemblies here, there and yonder. The Butterfly Song. <laughs> Thank you.
the way from Macrofeld. Have a really good day and thank you so much for watching.